Is your Xbox 360 exhibiting that dreaded red ring of death? Well, you're not alone. Nearly every one of the Xbox 360 fat units goes through this problem at some point or another in its life. In this video, I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take to fix your red ring of death by doing a reflow and repaste of your Xbox 360 system. And it all starts right now. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Blaine, and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. So if you like original content on restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. A quick word about this process. It's not terribly difficult, but there are a lot of steps. So make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video so that you can cover all of the steps and get your Xbox back up and running. Before you get started, you're going to need the following. You're going to need some thermal paste to replace the old paste in the system and some cloth to wipe it out with. A Torx number no. 6 tool, a small flat blade screwdriver, very small flat blade screwdriver. You'll also need a small awl or punch. You'll need some cleaner like 409 or Fantastic. A heat gun that's temperature controlled and isopropyl alcohol. All of these are listed for your convenience in the description below. The first step in the process is to remove the front faceplate. You can do this with your bare hands. Just reach around on the front faceplate and pull gently until you feel the front faceplate snap loose and it should all come off in one piece. Then you can take it and set it off to the side for cleaning. Next rotate the Xbox 360 either onto the top or the bottom. You'll need to remove the two gray grills that are on the sides and to do that you have to take a push tool in this case I'm just using an awl or a very sharp small push tool in order to push some gray tabs through these holes to release the gray grills. I'm going to show you specifically which ones work. Do you see how some of these grill holes are filled in white? Look either around or between them to find the push points for the gray tabs on the gray grills. See here, this one specifically between these two white dots made it possible to lift the first tab out. Moving over to the center, here's the second one. Note that when you push these in, push gently because you can break them, especially if your Xbox has been exposed to heat, like put in storage somewhere like this one was. I got this on Facebook Marketplace cheap because it had the red ring of death, but it also had been stored in a garage for seven years, so these plastics are fairly brittle. And moving over to the far end, this is the third one for this side. When you push that punch tool in, just be careful, take your time, and kind of rotate from the bottom upward toward the gray grill to just release those tabs. In this case, with the one side unlatched, the other side just came right out. Now rotate the Xbox 360 over to the side with the port on it. I found it easiest to go in in this gap right here. It lets you free up the first of the clips for this gray grill quite easily and it frees up both sides of them fairly quickly. Then you can rotate the console onto the top or the bottom and start releasing the center and the end clips for the gray grill. I pushed a small screwdriver in between the gray grill and the white case just to stop it from snapping back together which it had a tendency to do. So here's the middle clip and then I flipped it over because the middle clip on the other end was kind of resistant and it just didn't want to break anything. Just remember to be patient and not rush this process or you'll break these clips and it'll be difficult to reassemble your 360 properly. And then moving on to the end clip here. You may not have to push all of those clips out because if you take the tension off of one full side of it, the other side doesn't have tension anymore. So like in this case, once you get one side freed up, you can just pretty much take the other side off and you're good to go. The next step is to remove the top case for the Xbox 360. To do this, there's actually some clips right on the face of the Xbox that need to be lifted up. You can use a small pry tool to do this, but in this case, I was able to just use my fingers to do it. Just lift them up gently so that they don't break off. And you'll be able to take the top portion of the case that you see here and just kind of lift it up enough to free it so it doesn't snap back down onto the clips. Now flip the Xbox around to where the main ports are. 
Take a small pry tool, like a small screwdriver in this case, and very gently, and I stress gently, put it into each of these slots. There are two on one side and five on the other, and just slowly but surely start to work the case off. If you over pry on these things and you torque on them too hard, you'll end up breaking plastic and you won't be able to reassemble the Xbox 360 properly. Be patient, be slow, take your time, don't overdo the force on these. As each of the seven clips on the back went in, I heard a very small click. That was where the tension was released on each of the clips holding the top to the bottom. In fact, you can hear them clicking right here. But here's the deal. Don't push so hard till you break them off. You won't be able to secure the top and the bottom back together. Once you're confident that you have all seven of these pushed in enough to clear the top housing from the bottom housing, just make sure they don't snap back together. Hold them gently apart. Then rotate the Xbox down. And then you can lift up and separate the top from the bottom. Now that they're separated, take that bottom shell and set it off to the side for future cleaning. I sure hope you ate your Wheaties and drank your Gatorade because there are a lot of screws to take out at this point. There are six long screws and their purpose is to hold the guts to the plastic shell top. They're all going to be T6 Torx screws. There are three long screws that are right along the perimeter and then there are three more long screws that are not along the perimeter edge. They're kind of recessed in just a little bit as you can see here. But they're all the same length so you don't have to try to keep them split up from each other. Just keep them all together so that you know which ones you've taken out and just make note of where. Flip the Xbox 360 around with the face facing forward. You'll need to remove the eject button and it basically just pulls straight out. The silver button comes forward and then the mechanisms come forward with it, like so. At this point, you'll be able to pull that top shell off because you removed those six screws on the bottom. So just gently lift up from the face and you'll find that the top shell should come off without any resistance or obstruction, like so. Set it to the side for cleaning. The first thing you'll encounter is an RF shield, but it's not secured down with anything. Just lift it up, set it off to the side for cleaning, and you'll see the guts. The disk drive is the next thing to come out. To get it out, first remove the faceplate by just lifting up and rolling it up the top and out of the way. The disk drive is connected to the Xbox 360 by two sets of cables, one for power and one for data transfer. Fortunately, they both just pull straight out the back of the unit, so all you have to do is just gently wheel them out and they'll come right out. You shouldn't meet any significant resistance here, but don't pull by the wires, pull by the plugs as much as possible to avoid pulling the wires out of the plugs themselves. With the wires removed from the back, you can straight up just lift the optical drive right out of the console and set it off to the side to give it a good wipe down. There's a plastic hood that redirects air from the fans around the heat sinks. All you have to do to remove it is just gently pry this one retaining tab and it'll come right out. Set it off to the side for cleaning. As this repair process requires not just repasting but also reflowing this board, you're going to need to get the heat sinks off. Flip the Xbox 360 back over. Here's the deal. There are two separate sets of screws. You have eight on those X's that you see there, and then you have nine around the perimeter. You'll need to remove the nine around the perimeter in order to get the guts the rest of the way out. So using a T6 Torx driver, take out all nine of the screws around the perimeter and then all eight of the screws on the two X's on the tips that you see in the center area here. No sense washing grass grow? Turbocharged mode for the win, it is. And once this is done, you'll need to flip the Xbox 360 console back over because there's a little bit more work to do to get the motherboard out. 
The two fans are connected to the motherboard by a single plug and wire set. Lift up on the plug and wire set, or in some cases you might have to use a pry tool to separate the two, and lift up to disconnect them. The last step to do before you can take the motherboard out is you need to remove the front panel that has the power button on it. This piece right here is pretty straightforward. It just has clips on the top and the bottom. You can just use your fingers to just release a clip either on the top or the bottom. It's probably easiest on the top. And this will just slide right off. That is where your red ring of death is being displayed at the moment. On the little LEDs right there. And then the power button is right in the center of that. Now you can see that there's actually three screws on the board and not two, but you have to remove that piece in order to get to that bottom center screw right here. So again, using a T6 Torx tool, just take out the three screws that hold this in. Also, this board has a port that comes off of it, a connector that goes into a port on the motherboard. And so when you go to put this board back on, you'll have to align this. So just make sure you pay attention to its orientation when you take it off. These three screws are all the same length, but it does pay to keep them separate from the other screws when you go to put this back together. Then the board just pulls straight forward and out of the way. Now at this point, you can finally remove the motherboard from the case. All you have to do here is just lift up. You shouldn't meet a lot of resistance. Just work it out slowly and gently, and it'll come right out of the case. Keep the motherboard, Set the case aside for future cleaning. Don't be surprised if you see little tiny bits of stuff that may have broken off along the way. In this case, remember this Xbox had been sitting in a garage boxed up for seven years. The prior owner said it got the red ring of death and they just put it back in the box and left it there. You're going to need to get the X clamps off in order to release the heat sinks from the top side of the motherboard. Now I'm not going to feed you a line here. These X clamps are kind of a pain. The best way I found to get them off was to use a small screwdriver or pry tool, insert it into the area where they're clamped on, and just kind of lift up. They're basically just clamped onto the posts at the bottoms of the heat sinks where they push through the motherboard. So there's one. And then you can turn around and retrieve the heat sink and get it out of the way. And yuck. That thermal paste is nasty. Don't worry, we'll be taking care of that directly. Okay, so that's one. Did I mention that these things are a real pain in the neck? You know, one of the things I found that I think helped with this was just try to pry two sides of the X that are on the same side, not ones that are across from one another. If you can get two of them off, you can generally kind of wiggle the X the rest of the way out, and it will come off. It just takes patience. Don't pry too hard because you don't want to bend up the X clamps and you don't want to scrape the motherboard. So make sure you control that pry tool very carefully with your fingers. Because if you scrape up part of the motherboard, you can damage or destroy it and it'll be a really fancy green paperweight. Okay, there it comes. And then you can remove the other heat sink. Man, these things are nasty. That would explain why it was overheating. It had basically no good thermal paste on it at all. You'll need to clean the old thermal paste off of the CPU, which is on the right, and the GPU, which is on the left. In this case, I'm just using a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol, 99%. Wet the cloth and rub away. You want to clean all of the old thermal paste off of the chips until you can see the mirror shine off the chips' tops. If you have trouble getting dried thermal paste off of the chips, you can heat them up using a hair dryer or low heat on a heat gun, or use chemical thermal paste remover. You'll need to remove the thermal paste off of the two heat sinks as well, the one for the CPU and the one for the GPU. Again, I'm just using a microfiber cloth and 99% isopropyl alcohol here. But if you have difficulty, you can heat these up as well, or just use some chemical thermal paste remover. Once you have them squeaky clean, just set them off to the side. We'll reinstall them back onto the chips shortly. As you get ready to do the reflow process on the board, you'll need to focus on several areas. The purpose of this reflow process is to fix any warping on the motherboard and to reflow any loose or cold solder joints. 
Specifically, we're gonna focus on the CPU area, the GPU area, and the bottom of the board. But before you turn on that heat gun and start applying heat to the motherboard, let me ask you this. What's the one appliance in your house that's meant to withstand extremely high temperatures? It's your stove. It's a very safe place to operate these kind of hot temperatures. Using the instructions from ifixit.com, set your heat gun to low setting and run the heat gently back and forth on the board for about one full minute. What this will do is help fix any cold solder joints and also help form the board back into shape if it has any warping. I recommend going back and forth from side to side and then up and down in order to keep and distribute heat on the board as evenly as possible. Any cold spots or excessively hot spots on the board that aren't well managed can result in new warping to occur or new breaks in the existing solder joints. Once you've done this for one minute, let the board cool completely down so that it can form into shape and seal up any cold solder joints, but make sure you also protect the heat gun so it doesn't damage itself or anything around it. Once the board is completely cooled, flip it over. This process, you'll want to turn the heat gun on high and you'll want to start pre-warming the board before you attempt to do any heat work on the GPU or CPU. What you're doing is trying to eliminate as many cold spots on the board as possible to prevent warping. So go back and forth a number of times on the board to start pre-warming it. Also, don't apply any direct heat in the area of the plastic parts along the edges where the ports are, or you can warp those. If you have any concerns about it, you can cover those ports up with aluminum foil to protect them. Now, once you have the board adequately warmed up, do circles around the GPU and CPU area about 10 times to warm those areas up really well. Then continue to flow heat on the board all around the top area, except for those plastic pieces around the ports in order to keep the board warm and prevent any kind of warping. Then go back around, do about 10 circles around GPU and CPU. What this does is it heats up those specific solder areas, which are your main trouble areas on the board, and allows the solder to be reflowed and any warping in the board to get settled back down. You'll want to do this process for about four total minutes according to iFixit. So that's what I've illustrated here. Once you're done with the four minute process, do not touch the board. It will be very hot and it can burn you. Also, if your heat gun has this option on it, make sure you turn on the cool air setting. This is important so that the heat gun has an opportunity to cool down the nozzle so that it doesn't burn anything or anyone, including you. Make sure to let the board cool for at least 30 minutes. Once the board's completely cool, time to put new thermal paste on it. I'm using Arctic Silver 5, a well-known and well-respected brand of thermal paste. The goal here is not to overdo it. A dab will do you on each of the chips. If you put too much thermal paste on it, then cooling will actually be hindered. And if you don't put enough, then you'll have hot spots on the chips. Just put a dab on each of the chips and gently spread it around. Once you apply the heat sinks back to the chips, they'll help finish the job of spreading the heat sink thermal paste evenly. Let's start putting the heat sinks back in place. We'll start with the GPU heat sink. Push the four legs on the bottom of the heat sink through the four holes on the motherboard. You'll need to support the heat sink and then flip the motherboard over. From here, you'll attach the X clamp back onto those four legs in order to support the heat sink. The easiest way to do this is take two of the legs and attach them to the poles coming out of the bottom from the GPU heatsink. Then push the other two legs back down and snap them into place. Now you can apply the CPU heatsink. So again, push the legs through the holes designated for it on the motherboard. You'll need to support this one even more carefully than the one for the GPU as it's shorter. So support this heat sink in place and flip over the motherboard. Same process here. Slide the first two legs around the posts and then put pressure on the other two X legs to snap them down into place. Then flip the motherboard back over. 
No need to show it on video, but make sure that you clean anything that you've taken out of your Xbox 360 before you put it back in. Anything from a light wipe down with a microfiber cloth and some residential cleaner up to a full sink washing is in order. But if it's electronic, just give it a gentle wipe down. Don't wash it in the sink. And if those fans are really dusty, you might want to consider hitting them with some compressed air. Time to put the motherboard back in place. It should rest easily down in the shell exactly like you were able to easily remove it. You shouldn't have to do a whole lot of force fitting here. Just take your time and be gentle. And you may have to apply some light pressure at the corners in order to get things to snap into place. Also make sure any ports on the motherboard line up with the holes that are cut out for them in the case. Find the wire connection off of the two fans and make sure to plug it back into the motherboard. Most of what you'll be doing from this point forward is just the reverse of disassembly. You'll need to attach the front panel. Remember I mentioned that there's both a port and a plug on that front panel? Just line them up and make sure they're pushed in together or the front panel's not going to work when you fire back up the Xbox. And you took three screws out of it, so you need to put three screws back into it. Using a T6 Torx driver, put those same three screws you took out of the front panel board back into it to secure it in place. When you remove the front panel board, there was a little clip-on piece that made it look like the actual rings on top of the LED lights. You just need to take that piece with the extension leg that comes off the side of it pointing toward the bottom and just clip it back on over those LED lights. Now flip the Xbox over. You'll need to put the eight screws that match up with the eight corners of the X's on this metal plate. They help hold the GPU and CPU heat sinks to this metal plate to give it a stronger foundation and better secure fit to the chips themselves. Remember those nine perimeter screws you took out? Now's the time to put them back in. Just make sure you pay careful attention to where you took them out and where you put them back in. Remember that there are six long screws that help attach this framework to the top casing. These screws are small. To prevent cross-threading them, when you put the screw up to the screw hole, turn them about one full turn counterclockwise. You'll hear a click, then you can turn them in clockwise. Once you're done putting the screws in, flip the Xbox 360 back over. You need to put the shroud back in. All you have to do is set it in place and push it down on the retaining post. You'll hear it click once it's in place. Then you can replace the disk drive unit. You'll need to put the power cable and data cable back into the rear of the disk drive unit. Then put the faceplate back on the drive unit by just pressing it into place from the top and sliding it down until it clicks into place. Then you can rest the drive unit in the housing. Do you remember removing the eject button? It needs to go back. All you have to do is push it into place on the face of the Xbox exactly as you took it out. There's only one way it can go in. Silver button to the silver faceplate. You'll see the metal clip that goes down to manually push the eject button and the green piece that pushes into the front to secure it all into place. Take the guts of the Xbox 360 you've put together and put them into the base, the bottom piece. It should go in without a great deal of resistance. Just make sure that any ports coming out of the motherboard match up with any of the holes cut into the base piece. All right, I'm gonna save you a whole bunch of misery here. Before you assemble anything else, especially those clip pieces that press into each other, Test your Xbox 360 and make sure it works as you expect it to. And as you can see here, everything went to plan. It all booted up the first time, no problem. I actually ran about an hour's worth of burn-in tests and put several different games in the disk drive in order to simulate some of the gameplay load on the system to check for any overheating. I powered it off and powered it back on several times and every time it booted right up, no problems, no red rings. Now that your 360 is tested good, take it out of the bottom shell, put the RF shield back in place, and put it back into the top shell. You have to do it in this order so that you can install those six long screws underneath first before you put the bottom on. 
Now flip the 360 over to expose the bottom. Resecure the innards to the shell case with the six long screws that you took out previously. The screws should go all the way into the housings and screw all the way down securely. If they don't, you probably mixed up one of the nine perimeter screws, which are much smaller, with the holes for the six longer screws. These are all of the screws you have to deal with at this point. So just grab the bottom piece of the shell and snap it back into place against the top shell. Fortunately, these things are a lot easier to reassemble than they are to disassemble. Just make sure all of the clips and snaps line up carefully and push slowly. Reattach those two gray colored grills on the sides of the Xbox 360. You don't have to mess around with trying to take those retainer clips and push them out of the way with an awl this time. This is super simple. All you have to do is literally just push them into place and they'll clip right in. Then flip the Xbox over on its back. The side with the ports. You need to reattach the front faceplate. So just grab it and push it right into place. Just like you were able to remove it by simply unsnapping it with your hands, you can literally just pressure fit it right down into place. It should fit snugly and shouldn't give you any great deal of resistance. If it does, back it out, push it back in until it fits properly. Congratulations! You've taken a game console that was meant for the scrap heap and turned it back into a robust console for the gaming hobby. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next great upcoming Xbox 360 videos as they're published to the channel, and check out this video here to take the next step with your newly refurbished 360.